Bill Reisman, this is a gorgeous version of the MiG-17 with this fascinating red and black paint job. I know it's a great crowd pleaser, but you only recently acquired the MiG-17, but you're familiar with the MiG-17 in a past life, is that right? That's true. Uh, as a blue suitor, I spent 20 years studying intelligence reports uh, on how to fight this aircraft, preparing for possible confrontation. Uh, now I own and fly one. The world's really changing, Gordon. Absolutely right. 300 plus missions over uh, Vietnam and an F-100. This was one of the adversaries, obviously, that you were looking for at the time. Uh, absolutely. In fact, the MiG-17 was uh, more highly respected by our pilots in the Vietnam Air War than the MiG-21, which was, of course, a much more sophisticated airplane. The reason being that the MiG-17 has one of the tightest turning radiuses of any jet fighter built. The aircraft has a spectacular combat record. The MiG-17 has flown more actual combat in more different wars than any other fighter jet fighter produced. It's got to be a strange feeling, and perhaps just a little quirky for you to be up here flying a MiG-17 when it was one that you only read about and feared as an adversary. Well, actually, it's a wonderful feeling. Uh, I, I've got to be quite honest. In 40 years of flying, I've flown over 40-some different aircraft, and I love flying the MiG more than any other aircraft I've ever flown. I have a great deal of respect for this airplane. It's a wonderful aircraft. The MiG-15, of course, was the predecessor to this, and um, this one has a lot of uh, differences to the MiG-15. Uh, MiG rather. The MiG-15 uh, had some quirks to it in itself. The MiG-17, a different wing design and uh, several other functional differences that made this a far superior aircraft. That's right. In 1949, the uh, Soviets decided they wanted to go supersonic, so they took the MiG-15, which incidentally is a very dangerous aircraft. It had a lot of uh, uh, very bad adverse yaw characteristics, uh, very similar to the F-100 that I flew in the Air Force, and they redesigned the MiG-15 in an attempt to go supersonic. What they ended up doing was lengthening the fuselage four feet, adding an afterburner. They took the wind sw wing sweep from uh, 35 degrees to 45 degrees, Degrees. They made the wings thinner. They added a third stall fence, rounded the wing tips. They came up with an incredible aircraft that handles wonderfully. Very, uh, very honest airplane as compared to the MiG-15 in handling characteristics, and an aircraft that would do 1.1 Mach top speed on the aircraft, about 714 miles per hour. Now you sound like a salesman from the Mikoyan Gurevich <laughs> factory. These aircraft, in fact, still used by quite a number of countries as a frontline fighter, right? That's right. A lot of the third world countries still use the MiG-17 as their frontline fighter. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about an aircraft here that was, this particular aircraft was built in 1958. So that should give you some insight into the quality of this particular aircraft. You talked about the afterburner just a moment ago. I'd mentioned that superb red and black paint job that we have on as a crowd pleaser. That afterburner is something else. Cuts in and out like a cannon and uh, very, very visible. Yeah, air show crowds like speed and they like noise and they like smoke. And when I first saw the MiG-17 fly, I mean, I was smitten immediately, and I said, I've got to have that airplane. That's going to be the best airplane to show crowds on the air show circuit. And one of the reasons is it has a very inefficient afterburner. You get about 20 feet of bright orange flickering flame coming out, and as many people have told me, it looks like the whole tail end of the aircraft is on fire whenever I light the afterburner, and the crowds just go crazy over that. Absolutely. Two completely distinct and separate shows in MiG Magic, the daytime show and a nighttime show. Talk about the special smoke systems that we have on the aircraft. Yeah, we're really tickled. We uh, purchased two Sanders smoke generators and we hang them under each wing. So we have two gorgeous uh, plumes of uh, white smoke coming off the aircraft, which really accentuate the maneuvers, the aerobatic maneuvers that I do. And it makes it much easier for the crowd to actually see the movements that the aircraft is going through. These smoke generators, I know, are very, very special. Originally designed for NASA to study contrails and produce an enormous amount of smoke. They're actually self-fueled, correct? Th that's correct. Uh, we load them with uh, smoke, oil, and gas, and uh, they are a separate unit, separate from the aircraft engine, and that makes them much more effective. Great. Now, that produces the daytime show that you have with that beautiful smoke contrails. The nighttime show now is Pyrotechnics Plus, right? You bet. And uh, <laughs> people are asking me about the night show. It's pretty spectacular. And I guess the only thing I can say is that the porch lights are on, but I'm not sure anybody's uh, home upstairs. <laughs> uh, I hated night ground attack in the Air Force, and I can't believe I'm doing it now. But the, the reaction by the crowd uh, makes it worthwhile. They just go absolutely insane when they see this aircraft lit up with about a thousand feet of fire coming out behind each wing, in addition to the 20 feet of uh, afterburner flame that's coming out. 
the combination of the two, I know. I witnessed a night show here just recently, and looking at all those upturned faces and the amazed look on their face, as you said, with a thousand feet of smoke and sparks coming out of the back of the airplane, a truly awesome sight. Yes, it is. <laughs> Bill, we've talked about how magnificent the MiG is an air, as an air show performer, but an air show marketing tool. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that, again, was one of the reasons why I wanted the MiG. Uh, if a show markets the MiG properly and gets the publicity out, and people know that the MiG is coming to town, every show that we've performed at with the MiG has had a dramatic increase in their attendance at the air show because people want to see this aircraft. They just go crazy about it. And this MiG, incidentally, is absolutely authentic with the two 23-millimeter cannons, the 37-millimeter cannon on front, uh, that beautiful screaming afterburner kicks in and out like a cannon. Just flying over town, it has to have an incredible presence. Yeah, every time I go into a show, I usually circle the town, and uh, people come running out to the airport. Every place I land, there's a crowd of people gathered around because they want to see the MiG. MiG magic. It's the way to go. Bill Reisman, uh, air show crowds come to see the fabulous warbirds, the fighters, the jets, all of those. But I know that every one of those air show goers has got a secret desire tucked away down there. And that's a ride in the famous Lear 24. And you've got a way that that can come true for 1994. You bet. Uh, we have a Learjet, uh, 1968 Learjet 24B, which is our support aircraft. And we're actually flying an eight-minute sequence in front of the crowd with the Lear. And of course, you know how airshow crowds love noise and speed. And there's nothing noisier than a Learjet 24B, I can guarantee you. And uh, the reason I came up with the idea, about two years ago, I was at the Portland Rose Festival Air Show, and I was actually attending as a spectator. I was in the crowd, and it amazed me, but the crowd got more excited about the Federal Express Boeing 727 uh, exhibition of tight turns and climbs in front of the crowd than they did about most of the aerobatic acts. And that kind of told me that there's a niche there for air show crowds uh, where the Lear was going to be a good thing to bring in. Well, the Lear has a power to weight ratio and a performance envelope that make it a strong performer also. This is no mere flyby, is it? <laughs> no, we're not doing a flyby. We're doing really tight turns, steep climbs. Uh, the few shows that we've done it at, the crowd reaction has been uh, absolutely astonishing. And you've got to remember that Bill Lear actually built the Learjet as a copy of a Swedish fighter bomber. That's where the original design for the Learjet came from. If my memory serves me correct, and you'll probably correct me, it was also originally designed for one of the two engines that are on it, and the second engine was added because of an FAA requirement, in fact ended up with way more power than it was originally designed for. Oh yeah, this Hummer has got so much power you can't believe it. I mean, when we rotate on takeoff, uh, this thing just goes straight up like a rocket. Now, the way that this is planned as a marketing tool for 94, there's going to be uh, draws that will be going on throughout the day, and then five lucky passengers at the end of the day get a ride with all the leather accoutrements inside the Lear 24, right? That's right. The uh, show, we've tested this. The show has no problem marketing raffle tickets at $3 a head for a chance at a ride in the Learjet 24. And I don't, I've never met a person in the world that didn't want to ride in a Learjet sometime just to say they've done it. And so what happens is each day of the show, we draw five tickets. And after the show is over on Saturday and Sunday, we take the five lucky winners up for a, a, a Learjet ride, uh, including the pictures so that they can go home and show their families than friends that they've flown in a Learjet. The proceeds from that raffle stay with the air show, and basically what it ends up doing is cutting the cost of the MiG Magic Act by about 50%. So you can put together a great package of MiG Magic and the Lear 24 ride, a tremendous pair of marketing tools, and also a tremendous pair of acts for your 1994 show. Absolutely. Two high-speed, jet, noisy, beautiful acts. Brand new MiG Magic and Lear 24 for 1994. Thank you, Gordon.